You don't start things and not finish them. You don't quit. There's nothing that comes out of quitting besides knowing that you didn't finish. We finish everything. You start it, finish it. If you're going to do it, do it to try to be the best. Not to be better than other people, but to be the best for you. You grind hard so you can play hard. The work you put in will pay off. It could be a year, it could be 30 years, but you keep grinding. Welcome to Big Reptile Talk. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome to the podcast. As always, this is Big Reptile Talk. Really, we bring keepers that keep other things than reptiles, but still, this is Big Reptile Talk, the place where we bring amazing keepers in the hobby on, and we talk to them, see what they're up to. But before we get started, you know we got to pay those bills. So if you're here, make sure you check out Venomproof Cages, some of the best cages on the market, especially if you keep venomous reptiles. Keep your reptiles in style. Keep your reptiles safely. Check them out, some of the best cages on the market. And of course, talk about ship your reptiles. If you produce animals, if you produce leopard geckos, ball pythons, any kind of animals out there, let ship your reptiles handle all your shipping needs. This is such a good company. They just take the stress away from shipping your reptiles and allow you to focus on producing quality animals. So make sure you check them out. Super excited. What is going on, you guys? What's up to the early people coming in here? Morbid retics, man. That's my brother from another mother. Post the balls. What is going on? How you doing today, brother? That's a huge supporter, man. Huge supporter. Shout out to Iron Dog Reptiles, man. Y'all go check him out. Super good dude. Wild Boy Dev. Y'all make sure y'all go give him a follow. He's always at the Reptarium with Brian Barchek. Takes his anaconda, his retics up there. He hangs out with Brian Barchek. What else needs to be said? Give him a check him out. What's up, Moon over Miami? Everybody that's coming in, I just want to show y'all some love. Fries Critters, what is going on? Joshua Cooper, just all the people that are just tuning into the chat. I appreciate y'all showing up. Now, this is a special uh, podcast. I'm excited about this. We have Paul Beter, and I probably said that wrong. I probably butchered it, but we're going to bring him up. You know him from the Animal Planet hit show Gator Boys. He does some incredible stuff, just insane stuff i'm a huge fan so let's bring him on let's talk gators uh, I, i'm i'm super excited to talk to him so let's bring him in what is going on we got mr paul how do i say your last name uh bedard bedard how you doing today sir i'm all right man how you doing Excited to have you on the podcast. Um, I, I want to jump right into it, man. Before I ask you to come on my podcast, you were head in the Animal Con, man. So I, I want to get your, you know, your unedited take on it. How was Animal Con? How do you think it went? Do you think there'll be one next year? How do you feel about Animal Con? Yeah, I think it for for the first event, I think it went pretty good. Um, you know, I, I just started YouTube, so I went to learn from all these kids that are blowing up on YouTube and trying to learn what they're doing. And uh, go a different route than a TV route. So um, it was interesting to see all these big creators that I, to be honest, I didn't hear a half of these guys. And, you know, I find out they're like big names in the, in the industry. So it was cool to connect with some of those guys. And a lot of, I didn't think any people would show up. I thought first year, it's not a lot of advertising for it, but it was quite a few people there. I was surprised. Awesome, awesome event. A lot of my friends went, you know, we had, I've had Jay Brewer on, I've had Brian Barczyk on, just total icons in the reptile hobby. Now, did, now, what'd you, what'd you take away from it, if you don't mind me asking? Now, those two guys in particular, though, were really cool. Uh, I think I learned a lot from those guys because we're kind of that same age bracket. And, uh, yeah, they gave me a few, uh, a few tips. I'm going to release a bite video. I had a 12-foot gator take a divot out of my arm. And my buddy Jimmy stitched it up. So I was asking Brian, like, how do I how do I air this and not get in trouble? He goes, Well, you're not monetized yet anyway. Just go with it. Just throw it out there. Whatever happens, happens. So I'll probably end up with you. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it was it was a cool event, man. There was some and there's a kid a couple of kids in there that are gonna be the next Brian's and Jays. They're gonna be the guys that are out. I mean, these some little kid, I forget his name, uh, he dressed up as me for Halloween. And uh, he had his dad build him like a little a short bus with all kinds of reptile cages. And he goes around to schools 
and he films it. And if I could remember his channel, I would shout him out because the kid's really cool and he's going to be the future of the industry. Right, right, right. I love that. I, that 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 would make me feel good to see a kid dressed up as me. That is insane. Now, you know, we're talking about social media. I think that you're killing it on Instagram and you definitely want to grow your YouTube. So I want to I want to give you an idea and see see what you think about it. Now, you said you talked to Brian Barczyk and, you know, you're real big in the Gators. What do you think about this? He took one of his alligators to PetSmart and he got he did it right there. He got two hundred twenty nine thousand views. And I think he did it again and got around almost three million. Let me see. Yeah, right there. He took taking my albino alligator to PetSmart, and he got three point six million views. How do you feel about somebody, that? Somebody told me about that. I was trying to think I could bring a twelve foot alligator to public or something. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you did that, you'd go instantly go viral and go to prison probably. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as it don't bite nobody, you'd be good. Uh, Shout out to Joshua Cooper. He, you know, you have a lot of people that want to see you do a lot more podcasts. He said, tell Paul he would love to see you on the Motley Croc Show podcast with Jimbo. I don't know who he is, but tell him to bring it on. You know, you, a lot of people want to see you, you know, tell your story. So let's jump right into it. You know, why animals? What, what made you want to dedicate your life to animals? Dude, it, uh, all this stuff is like uh, a happenstance. I never had. I always loved alligators and sharks. I was a shark guy before I was an alligator guy, but you obviously know who Manny Puig is. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, Manny's one of my best friends. We used to live together in the Keys, but I used to get seasick. We'd go out looking for sharks every day, and I'd be throwing up over the side of the boat, and he was like, I gotta take you to the swamp. He goes, yeah, I think you'd kill it in the swamp. So one day he took me out there, and I was like, yeah, this is nice. I don't throw up out here. This is pretty cool. But um, yeah, it didn't, like, the, the alligator rescue is a total accident. And I never wanted to do it. I just, I worked at a place and I asked where they got their gators from. And they said, oh, we're, we're on the Seminole Reservation. So we just go to the swamp and take them out of the swamp. And I was like, but they're not bothering anybody out there. Why don't you just buy them off the trappers? The trappers kill them. And at the time, this is, you know, back in like the early 90s, they were like, hey, if you want to waste 300 bucks on an alligator, go ahead. We get them for free. And I, I probably made like 10 grand a year at that point. But to prove a point, I went, I found a trapper, and I bought a couple of alligators off him over a couple of years. And he finally said, hey, if you really want to save alligators, he goes, I get overwhelmed during the breeding season. When I'm too busy, you can catch gators for me, and whatever gator you catch is yours. And I thought, wow, that's great. I'll get to save all these alligators. And then my life ended. Um, if I could do it again, I'm, I'm honest, I would never get into this. I hate what I do every day as far as catching alligators. I just hate dead gators more. Yeah. That makes sense. You you know, you don't want to. Sorry, I'd rather move the people than the alligators, but they don't let you do that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So you started your alligator rescue by accident. You know, you decided just to start keeping them so people don't kill them. I love that. That That's that's literally almost the definition of conservation. You want to save these creatures. I love that. So, you know, with, with, with your alligator rescue, you know, do you consider that like your personal collection or is that like open to the public to where they can come see them, come view them? Yeah, I donate them to different uh, sanctuaries like Everglades Outpost down in uh, Homestead. They've taken probably over 500 alligators for me. Um, Everglades Alligator Farm, they have a huge breeding pond. And it's not like a functioning farm. They don't make purses and boots. It, it was way back in the day. Now it's a tourist attraction. They have airboat rides and gator shows and stuff. And I've probably given them four or 500 over the years. So, And then where I volunteer at is Everglades Holiday Park. And we've got 15 gators in the pit for shows. And those are like my baby boys. There's a few, there's a few at the outpost. There's a few at the farm. But uh, the ones that I have a special connection with are a lot of them are at Everglades uh, Holiday Park where we do the shows with them. Because if you go to my YouTube channel, look at my jigsaw video, they're gators like that. You can pet them in the face. They're just like sweetheart. I'll pet, pet them in the face. They, if you would say... Puppy dog tame almost. Yeah, I trust. I said this in the video. Like, I've worked with all kinds of animals. Uh, you know, big cats, primates, uh, bears, panthers. You name it, I've worked with them. Tigers. I don't trust any of them as much as I trust an alligator. The operating system in his brain is so much smaller and simpler 
than that of a mammal. Mammals have emotions. Mammals have, you know, good days and bad days. Gators really consistent. They're just, uh, they're literally like living machines. And, uh, you know, if, if they're not in the mood, they'll give you a little bit of a hiss. And to be honest, I have gators hiss at me and I laugh at them and kiss them in the face because I know they're full of crap. But they're, uh, if you're around them enough, they can be very predictable. Certain ones. I've got some that are, they got some screws loose. Now, do, you, do you feel like they, when, when you're around them enough, do you feel like they start to begin to recognize you? You know, do, oh, yeah. are they are they able to, you know, if you're like, hey, come here, come here, buddy. Do you think that they recognize their names almost like dogs? Oh, yeah. If you go to the, like I said, go to the Jigsaw video. I call Jigsaw. He comes over. But but he's coming over in the hopes he's going to get some food. He knows he's not always going to get it, but that's why he's coming over. He's not coming. I've had one gator, maybe two. That I think actually at least fooled me into thinking they enjoyed my company. I've got a gator named Bandit down at the outpost. And when he was at Holiday Park doing the shows, there'd be a pile of gators in one corner getting sun. And I'd go lay on the grass and he'd walk over to me and lay next to me. Like he preferred hanging out with me than the other alligators. I don't know if it's because he knew I wasn't going to hurt him. And, you know, a gator may bite another gator if, if he get getting, uh, you know, they run into each other and step on each other. And he knows I'm not going to do that. Or, you know, he just preferred hanging out with me over Gators. I don't know. That is insane. That is insane. I love it. I love it. Now, I think you already answered this question, but I'm going to ask it again anyway. You know, I wanted to talk to you about your mentor. You know, you have so much knowledge when it comes to these Gators. I was wondering who your mentor was, but you kind of said that already that it was Manny Quag from Jackass, and I think that that is insane. Do y'all still hang out from time to time and work with animals? Yeah, Manny's uh, – I've known Manny since I was 18, and uh, he is – you know, people talking about Jeff Corwin, Steve Irwin – Back in the day, it was uh, Marlon Perkins and those guys. Uh, Jacques Cousteau, nobody's like Manny. Manny's a different level. People tell me all the time, like, oh, you have an unspoken language with the animal, and you under – no, I don't. I really don't. Nobody ever has except for Manny. Manny's got, like, this it's, – it's, it's, it's hard to explain how, like, crazy his brain works because it's different than other people. It really is. And uh, – yeah, like no one would ever go in the water with crocodiles and alligators until Manny did it. No one was riding tiger sharks until Manny did it. Like, no one thought about that stuff. You thought you go in the water with a big alligator, you're dead. I was 18 years old. He took me out to the swamp and said, okay, we're going to go in the water. Oh, there's a big gator in here. We're going to get in. I was like, you have your mind? No, I'm not getting in the water. And I watched him go in the water and just levitate this thing off the bottom with one hand. And I'm like, how are you not dead? I did. I couldn't. It took me like a week of like waking up in the middle of the night going, how is this possible? This doesn't make any sense to me at all. Everything I've been taught about alligators has just been flipped upside down. Um, you know, having said that, he wouldn't sure go and say, listen, if you get the wrong alligator, he's going to come after you. If you're on the surface and you know, the gator's on the surface and you're on the surface, you're a duck. What's below the duck? Nothing. He doesn't know anybody. I've been grabbed by a Skinny little eight foot alligator because he thought my head was a duck. He got a couple of elbows in the throat and he was like, That's a big duck. Spit me out and took off. Hold on, hold on. I got to interrupt you. I got to interrupt you. Did you just say you got bit in the head by an alligator? Oh, no. I've been, this one was in the shoulder, but I've been bit in the oh. head five. I've been bit in the head five times. But that's doing, that's doing like a head trick. Like for when I used to wrestle, I was all about the Seminoles. That was like, you got to do the show the way the Seminoles did it. And they put their head in the alligator's mouth. And uh, I used to do 15 shows a day at a holiday park. And I put my head in the gator's mouth 15 times a day. And uh, one time, one of the elder Seminole guys was like, hey, you know, we didn't do that all the time. <laughs> I heard you've been getting bit in the head all the time. I said, yeah, it happened. He goes, we did like one show a day, like two shows a day. He goes, you're doing 15. He goes, stop that stuff. You're going to die. <laughs> now, what now? Of course, your head. I'm sure that hurt it. But what do you think was the? What do you think was like your worst bite? Do you think that the 12 foot when it took something out of your arm, your head? What do you think was your um, worst bite you ever experienced? I, my worst bite's a Western Diamondback, uh, not an alligator. Where am I over here? Um, but uh, for a gator bite, 
I've had this hand crushed pretty good by the same 12 foot alligator that took a divot out of my arm. Um, I have both of those on video and I have the Western diamond back on video. So I'm going to put YouTube videos out on that in the near future. Oh yeah. Uh, you need to, you need to put old, that on YouTube. These are old injuries though. These are 20 years ago, some of them, but um, I've never really shared them with anybody, but I'm trying to, my rescue is like ready to implode because the last two years with COVID, I kind of ran through all the money. That's why I try to do this YouTube thing to, to generate some income to keep it alive, but of course, of course, of course, you know you want to generate that traffic and get that YouTube check. I'm not mad at you. People like to see me bleed, apparently. So we're gonna throw that out and see what happens. Now I know you got your own rescue, but you know, have you visited any other other gator things down in Florida, like Gatorland, Primitive Predators? Have you been yeah. to any other facilities? Yeah, we were just at Gatorland after Animal Con. They had a little private um, get together, basically after hours. And I've been there, you know, in the past. I've been to all the places. I, you know, I'm a big fan of all, all things alligator, crocodile, and reptile. So um, I well, check out most of these places. Well, being in Florida, man, I think that when you start your YouTube, you need to do a collaboration with Savannah Bone, man. Now, that's the queen of Gatorland. Yeah, my agent, Gabby, she's got like 230-something thousand followers, I think, on uh, YouTube, subscribe or whatever it is. But, uh, yeah, she knows uh, Savannah pretty well, and Savannah's going to come down and catch some gators with me and Gabby. Oh, that'll be – that. oh, yeah, Gabby. I want to say Gabby Nicole, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what, Yeah, I know exactly who she is. Now, now I, I want to talk about this. Um, you know, I've seen that – you know, we're going to talk about the TV show later because that, that's so in, in, incredible. But I've seen that not only do you have your rescue, but you actually go out to, like, people's houses, people's homes, to this – bit to to this place and rescue gators when you get that call. Am I, am I correct? Yeah, that's pretty much, I don't really have a rescue. I'm the rescue. I donate all the gators to the sanctuary. Oh. I don't own I'm a volunteer at Everly Holiday Park, but I work like 30 to 60 hours a week for free to catch the alligators that are considered a nuisance or a threat to people, pets, or livestock. Um, the trappers are essentially paid by being able to harvest the meat and the hide of the alligator. So if you don't kill them, you really don't get paid. So, um, What's, what's your craziest rescue story? Where's the, the craziest place you went to go rescue an alligator? Uh, nothing too bad. I've had them like inside of a house before, like a house under construction. There's no doors on them. Gator walks in. I had one the other day, gator in a fenced-in backyard. He saw the little dog crawled over the fence and was looking for that dog to come out of the house again. But... Uh, yeah, gators under cars, gators in the middle of the highway stopping traffic. Um, nothing too crazy. My buddy Kevin Garvey got one out of an elevator one time. Out of an elevator? Yeah, freight elevator in a building under construction. The guy, they let, the doors are open. The guy's on the top floor, pushes the button, fifth floor, opens it, put an alligator in there. He just walked away. And the gator was walking around on the fifth floor in the construction. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it, man. Now I gotta, I gotta ask, you know, and I'm, and this is not to knock anybody. This is not to, you know, disrespect anybody. But I'm kind of curious, you know, what's your take on gators as pets? Um, I mean, it depends. Like, if you've got countless hours to spend with them, and it's a good gator, I, I think, I don't know because I haven't really tried it, but you can get a baby alligator and treat it perfectly for 20 years and it'll still bite you in the face. Some have it and some don't. Like I said, I just did my jigsaw video. He's a wild caught gator over eight feet. And I could tell as soon as I caught him that I could pet him in the face in two weeks. I said it the day I caught him. I said, guarantee you two weeks, pet him in the face. There's something in their eyes sometimes that I've only seen about 15 to 20 times, but I just knew he was a puppy dog as soon as I saw him. And I don't know if you know who Jim is. I forget Jim's last name. He has a big, famous gator named Bubba. I know exactly who that is. Yeah. Uh, Jim went through, like, you know, 15 or 20 Bubbas to get the real Bubba, to get the one that you can – I saw a kid at Tinley's up in Chicago, or wherever that is. Uh, is that, where yeah. was Tinley? Tinley Park, Chicago. It's Chicago. Yeah. He uh, he had the gator on there on, his, on a red carpet, and – I saw him when he pulled up. They opened the van. Bubba walks out of the van, knows to look for the red carpet. He sees the red carpet, goes and just lays on a red carpet, 10-foot alligator, just like a puppy dog. And they have to have a band on his mouth, so Jim put the hair band on him. 
So the gator can yawn full wide open. And uh, I looked at the law enforcement guy when he yawned. And he said, hey, it's a band. That's all he say. All it stipulates has to have a band. But I watched like a five-year-old kid walk over and punt that gator right in the face. Because he thought it was fake. And Bubba just went like, just turned away. They could, I mean, obviously, it doesn't hurt a 10 foot alligator to be kicked by a five year old, but there was no aggression. There was no thought of, I'm going to, you know, get this kid. Or it wasn't like, you know, if you kick a dog in the face, he's probably going to react to you. Um, right. Bubba was just like, hey, whatever, dude. Right, right, right. So I agree. I agree. So pretty much basically, like you said, gators as pets, you know, as long as you have the, the right facility, the right time, the right tools, and you, you know, you have the knowledge, you don't mind it. Yeah, I, I think anybody should be allowed to own anything as long as the animal is treated well. I think people like talk about the, um, you know, uh, the, the knowledge of the handler. Listen, you're a grown adult. You should be able to take whatever risk you want. Do your research. Find out what it takes to own these pets and just have the, you know, the, uh, the state come by and say, okay, this is a good facility. We're cool with it. Or, all right, you're abusing this animal. He's gone. You know, give, you have to give people a chance to make to make the to make the mistake or to you know to do a good job. One hundred percent, good old USA. This is our your right now. I, I got to ask this man because you know this TV show it, it it was so iconic. So my question to you is, you know, when you were on this TV show or even in your current life now, what is your anxiety level when you are dealing with these um, animals? Is it, you know, is it for on a scale of one to 10, what's your anxiety level? And if it's pretty low, you know, why do you think your anxiety is so low when you're, when you're dealing with these animals? You know, you know, what's your anxiety? What's going through your mind when you're dealing with these animals? I don't, I, I'm not trying to sound like, you know, uh, tough or anything, but I, I don't have any. I just, I'm actually dumb enough to think I know what I'm doing. So I, you know, I feel more in my element. It's like when I, I do a lot of ultra distance triathlons and stuff, and I see guys at the beginning of the race all stressed out. I'm like, I fall asleep before the race. Like, this is what I'm here to do. This is what I'm most comfortable with. This is my my favorite thing in the world is to race triathlon. So I just I'm more relaxed at a race than I am anywhere else. And it's the same thing with an alligator. If I'm down like swimming down 20 or 30 feet looking for a big alligator in the bottom, to me that's like tranquility man it's just me there's nothing going on now if you turn around and he's freight training you um you know that'll wake you up but uh for the most part it's pretty uh i just i just was working on a video the other day i i was dragging a 10 foot alligator across the pond and uh not a 10 he was nine feet but i couldn't get him out of the water where i caught him so i had to swim like 300 yards to get him out of the water at this little boat ramp and uh as I'm swimming, I look up and there's another one under the bushes. And they had told me there's a nine footer and a six footer. So I'm like, oh, that's that little one. We're cool. And I'm swimming, dragging this big guy through the grass and stuff. And he's getting stuck. And I got to stop and lift him off the bottom and whatever. And then, uh, you know, the other voice in my head is like, hey, check out homeboy on the side there. I look over. He's still sitting in the trees. We're all good. And I get to this point where the gators knows that I'm dragging on a rope. On the bottom, got stuck under a ledge or a tree or something, and I just couldn't get him over it. So I'm sitting there yanking and pulling, and this gator is only like 50 feet away, maybe 100 feet away. And I'm yanking, and then that other voice goes off in my head and says, hey, don't forget about that other gator. And then I'm like talking to myself. There's two two voices in there going, nah, even if he started coming when you, when you looked away, he's only halfway here. You got time. So I'm yanking, yanking, trying to get this gator over this ledge. And finally, the voice goes on again and says, hey, you might want to look up because if he did come when you started struggling, he's going to be right in your face. And I looked up and I'd say seven, ten feet away is another nine-foot alligator with white water peeling off his nose coming to do me ugly. And I was like, oh, God, thank God I looked up in time. I just kind of gave him the Heisman and threw him. And then as I came to the, the shallows, because I was immediately I'm thinking – I'm going to grab this other one barehanded. I'm going to come in with two alligators. It's going to look, somebody was filming it. I'm like, this will look really good. And uh, I thought he was only like eight feet, though, when I first pushed him back. And then when I got to the shallows and he came again and his back came up out of the water, I was like, ooh, <laughs> you might not want to try to bear hug this guy. He's going to do me 
But uh, I ended up getting the first one in, and then I went back and got the second nine-footer, and I put them both in the start. Mr. Paul, I have to say that you have lived a – and are still living an insane life, man. I'm jealous. Um, now, I want to play – I want to have a little fun. I want to ask you a hot seat question. All right. Let's say I was a movie producer and I was making a movie about your life and it was called, you know, Paul, Paul, it was Paul the Gator Boy. What actor, you know, who am I getting to play you in the movie? Who would I, who, who's going to play you in your autobiography? I don't know. Some, some random guy off the street. Just, just some regular guy. I'm not, I'm no, uh, I don't deserve anybody good. I'm just a regular dude. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll just, we'll just say you playing yourself in your movie, you know, because nobody That'll can do work. what you're doing. That'll work. Now, I got to now I gotta ask, you know, I want, definitely before we, you know, because like I said, I know you're busy, but I want to talk about this TV show, you know. Um, how? How did this TV show come about? Um, this is kind of like a two-part question. How did you end up getting this TV show? And, you know, it ran for six seasons. So my question to you is, why do you think you guys had so much longevity? on this TV show? Um, I don't know why. I think it, um, I'd like to say because I think because we were saving the alligators instead of killing them, but the swamp people put bullets in their head all day and I think they're still running. So it's not just that. Um, you know, they got something, I don't know what they're doing different than we did, but uh, they're, they're on like 15 or 20 seasons. Who knows? But um yeah, I, I, the comments I get the most is they love the fact that we don't kill the alligators. And, uh, you know, I feel like I was kind of the guy that gave them a voice because they're not cute enough for people to really get to make a big movement. If I was saving baby seals, I wouldn't need to be wrestling gators and trying to raise money to save them because people would donate because, you know, the little seal pups are adorable and nobody wants them killed. But, I go to gator people's house all the time and I'll say, hey, you know, I know they told you that the trapper's going to kill the alligator. I'm the only non-killed trapper that I know of, but I'm not going to kill him to go to the sanctuary. And about a quarter of people say, I don't care. So I'm just get him out of here. <laughs> Thanks. Sad, but, man. It's sad. Yeah, I mean, if you if you caught a dog, you had a stray dog in the neighborhood, and you caught him with a baited hook, the neighborhood would lose their mind. But Trappers do it all the time with alligators, and nobody bats an eyelash. Have you ever thought about, you know, um, trying to get the laws changed to help them? You know, to help gators? No, nah, I'm not that. I'm not that influential. I can, uh, there's not enough. Um, I don't need to be enough support behind it. Like I said, they're just not cute enough. Um, yeah. I mean, pit bulls, you know, uh, will kill all kinds of people and whatever, whatever. But pit bulls can be absolutely adorable. And people see the good side of them, so they get behind that. You know what I mean? I'm trying to show that with alligators, with like Jigsaw and Casper and all these other sweetheart gators that I have. But even then, I have everybody, all these experts are like, no, but he's always a wild animal. I'm like, yeah, not really. No. Right, right, right. It's sad, man. It's sad that you have those shows like Swamp People where they are killing animals. It's, 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 it's definitely sad. Now, in quarant uh, before we keep going, My Animal House, thank you so much for that super chat. I appreciate you. Y'all make sure y'all go give My Animal House some love. Check his channel out. Um, I want to ask, you know, Inquiring Minds want to know, you know, you, ran, you guys ran six seasons, an incredible show on Animal Planet. When is the reunion? I don't think they'll ever be a reunion. Everybody, there's, to be honest, there's only two people in that show that really helped me catch gators, um, like, without the show. Like, I brought in my friend Jimmy and a couple other guys to help be a cast on the show. But when the cameras leave, those guys have other things to do. You know what I mean? They got real lives. But Scott from the TV show, the red shirt, he was with me for, like, a year and a half before the show, after the show, morning, noon, and night. And then... My girlfriend at that time, a girl named Caroline, she's probably in three episodes, but she caught more gators than everyone in that show combined except me, and she's better than every one of those guys at catching alligators. She's she's my ex-girlfriend, so I'm not I'm not trying to pad my stats here, but that's the best trapper I've ever worked with. Twenty five year old young girl. If I had to catch a gator, I would go find her and say, Hey, listen, this is like for my life. I need you to come help me with this gator. Like, and she got no credit on the show. She was just like a new volunteer with a white dog. It was a weird thing because, like I said, she had been doing it longer than all those guys. But she had been away at college 
getting her master's degree and they didn't want to bring her on and have her just, I don't know, be, I don't know, be top tier. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Shout out to Mike's monitors. He came in. He wanted to give you a comment. He said he loved your show. I appreciate it. Gator boys, man. I want you to understand that y'all did something that I don't think will ever be done again. It was iconic. Now I want to have a little fun. I'm not trying to be in your business. And when I ask this, I don't want you to tell me. I'm not trying to, you know, I don't want you to tell me how much you made. That's not what I'm asking. This is just to have a little. This is just to have a little fun. It's a hot seat question. Okay, your first episode. You know, you you've done it. You're on TV. You knocked it out of the park. You get your first residual check you get your first check from the show what's the first no. thing you bought yourself let me stop you right there there's no residual checks what uh, there's no there's no um what do you call that royalty checks none of that stuff that's that's if you're sag that's why reality shows are so big they pay you one time a starting show you make two three thousand dollars an episode that's it nobody got rich off gator boys trust me Okay, even even still, okay. Well, if you didn't get rich, what's the first thing you bought yourself off the show? Um, nothing really. I I I was paying bills with that stuff. I um, I was gonna buy a new truck, and then somebody offered to give me a truck, and then Animal Planet stepped in, and was like, "No, you can't give him a truck. You got to give us the truck, and then you pay us." So then I lost that. So then Animal Planet bought me a truck. Because they screwed up my deal. So they stepped in and said, hey, that was our fault. We blew that. We're trying to get more money out of the Ford. So they bought me a used truck. But, hey, for me, it was new. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. Like I said, just a, just an awesome show. Now, I know it was six seasons, a lot of episodes. But what do you recall, what was your favorite episode that you shot? I don't know. I've never really seen the show. Uh, I think the first episode I saw was, like, season three. We were in a hotel filming in Mississippi. And they had all the food in the lobby, and the show was on. That was the first time I'd ever seen the show. Um, I'd never watched it. You know, it didn't really appeal to me. It's like I lived it. I don't have to watch it. Like, I don't yeah. want to see how bad they screwed it up. Because I know it's not going to look the way it was really done. I think, it was, wrong. I think it was an excellent show. And they were always trying to get me to, like, be um, sensational. You know, how dangerous it was. And they wanted me to be, like, over the top. And I was like... Like I just told you, I'm dumb enough to think I know what I'm doing. There's only one guy ever that could basically brag on himself and not sound like a jerk, and that was Steve Irwin, because he did it in such a fun way. It made you think that he wasn't he wasn't telling you that he was this brave guy. He was just telling you like this is this is insane what he's doing, but it was a fun way. And I don't I don't really know how to do that as well as he did. So I just said, listen, I'm not gonna like overhype something like. I don't think it's that dangerous. I wouldn't keep doing it. Like, I think I know what I'm doing. Like, I'm not going in there thinking I'm going to die. It's like driving a car. If you put somebody from the Yanomami tribe in South America, throw them on I-95 in Miami in rush hour, that guy's dead. It's extremely dangerous for that guy. You know what I mean? He's driving 95 miles an hour in a car he's never driven. Super dangerous. But if you know what you're doing, you're just in traffic. Right, right, right. I love it. I love it, man. Just like I said, just say all around awesome show. Now, this is more so um, to inspire people. I'm kind of curious, you know, what were you doing before you actually got your your TV show? Same thing I'm doing now, just uh, uh, wrestling gators. And I do uh, some security. It's called security. It's like uh, if you're doing a shootout in the Everglades or the, or the swamp or whatever, you want to make sure nobody gets bitten by an alligator steps on a water moccasin, rattlesnake or bear, panther. I'm the guy that makes sure nobody gets hurt with that stuff. One of the guys, me and my buddy Ron and Artie Maleshi. But um, Manny's done it a few times with us too. Um, the higher us to be security and make sure nobody gets uh, done in by the, uh, the dangers of the swamp. I see. I see. I love it. I love it, man. Now, while we're and I won't keep you too long. We're almost done. I know you're very busy, but could mm -hmm. you give us one misconception about Gators? Something that you're just like, yeah, that shit is completely false. <laughs> There's a million of them. Uh, you know, run zigzag is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. You know, just run. You're fine. The reason they came up with that, and I think, is because Gators, the way they're designed, biomechanically, they can't run zigzag very well. You know who else can't run zigzag very well? Bipedal animals. 
we step over our own two feet. Unless your last name is Sanders, first name is Barry or Dion, you're not going to run zigzag very fast. So that's that, that thing's been down here in Florida forever. I think the old people came up with it. So the young people be running zigzag and fall and they'd be able to get away. Right, right, right. I love it, man. Now, I got to ask this. It's kind of a, a, a weird question, but, you know, we all seen the show on, on Netflix. You know, we've seen the Tiger Kings. We've seen the exposés and we've seen the, you know, the documentaries about big cats and, you know, snakes and this and that. So my question to you is, you know, down in Florida, do you think we'll ever produce a movie like something like a Gator King almost and kind of talk about the Gators down there? Actually, I actually pitched that show to somebody called Reptile King. We were trying to pitch that. Um, you think tiger people are crazy? They ain't got a clue. You know, you know reptile people are crazy. And down here especially, different, like those Tiger King people, I never, I never saw the show, but I know some of those people, and they're like doctors and lawyers compared to the reptile people down there. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Now, I got to ask, you know, shout out. We always, you know, we always, uh, you know, shout out USARC. Please make sure if you keep animals, if you love animals, support USARC. They want to help us keep our animals. So my question to you is, you know, they're real tough down in Florida. You know, they, they just about want to ban everything or make you have a license for everything. My question to you is, if the laws get any tighter down there in Florida, do you ever see yourself leaving Florida? Um, I don't really keep any animals, so it doesn't really affect me. And the gators that I do catch go to sanctuaries. It wouldn't really affect me. But it is sad that they don't allow people to have personal responsibility. And, you know, they use the pythons as an excuse and the tegus as an excuse. Well, that's, you know, then do what they're, you know, I don't mind them putting a chip in the animal. And if it gets away, the guy who let it go is responsible. That's okay with me. Um, to me, that's kind of reasonable. But, um yeah, like I'm going to I'm going to look for pythons as soon as I'm done with you. Um, I'm one of the python contractors as well. So um, and I'm I'm lowering my hours this month. I got I got to get my hours up by the end of the month. They have to do a certain amount of hours per quarter. But um, and it's not a good time to. I'm probably not going to find anything tonight. But I'm going to give it a shot. But uh, yeah, the python thing is so big. It's kind of like I think it puts such a fear into everybody that they. They think all the other animals, like the, the iguanas. The iguanas aren't really doing that big of a, that much damage to the environment. You know, they eat flowers. They eat some, you know, uh, some food that our indigenous animals eat. But it's not like the python. You know what I mean? So they want to ban everything. And uh, to me, like I said, there's got to be personal responsibility somewhere. And if you screw up, you pay the price. But right. they just want to eliminate the risk. Right, right, right. Who knows nothing about animals and has nothing to do with animals is making a decision for the people that actually do want to have animals. So it's you know, it's hard to to reach somebody who thinks you keeping snakes makes you a weirdo. You know what I mean? The guy making a decision to not allow you to have certain snakes or whatever, he doesn't keep snakes. So he's like, yeah, those guys are all weird. The heck of those people. Right, Unless right, right. Out, you know, keep doing. Mm, I get it. I get it. Now, I want to have a little fun. You know, I'm a, I'm team iPhone. I love the iPhone. Uh, the 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 iPhone 14 just came out this month. So just a hot seat question. This and this is this will determine if I like you or not. So my question to you is: Android or Apple? Uh, all my computers are Macs, but my phone is an Android because it's so durable. I drop my phone in the water. All kinds of stuff. So I've got an old uh, uh, Android like commando thing that I've dropped 30 feet out of a tree. I've dropped it in the water, underwater, and it's fine. So I'm going to have that. I'm always jumping in the swamp with the phone in my pocket. So all right. iPhones, didn't, iPhones didn't work for me. But all my computers are Macs. I prefer Mac products. Uh, uh, if all things are even. All right. I guess I won't penalize you too bad since you do got some Apple products. Now, I got to ask, you know, you're working with just um, some amazing animals, and I'm going to show some of these pictures again real quick. You know, you you work with some just amazing, amazing animals. But my question to you is, do you feel like you're kind of content working with what you're working with now, or is there a dream species out there for you um, that, you know, if you got the chance, you'd go to come, come out, you know, go and 
catch Komodo dragons if you could? Is there yeah. is there a species my, you want to work with? My buddy Mark went went there and uh, he's worked with the Komodo dragons. He's my camera guy. He's uh he does all the Shark Week stuff. He did a Shark Week special. Finally, he went on camera. He was always behind the scenes for all the Shark Week stuff, all the underwater stuff. Uh, when I'm catching gators underwater, my boy Mark is in there with me filming. And he's the he's the man. He's the king of cojones. Like, nobody, nobody. Like, it's, he's the man. Like, like, there's, a, there's a list somewhere. You can throw in Travis Pastrana, all the animal people, whatever you want. It's Mark Rackley, Evil Knievel, and the rest of us are way down there somewhere. But those two guys stick out to me as the craziest, baldiest guys that have ever walked the planet. And um, I'm lucky for, you know, he's one of my best friends. And uh, But he's a different animal. He's been attacked by everything. I mean, elephants, gorillas. He filmed himself getting attacked by a cheetah. He's like, oh, he got me. He's still filming it. I'm like, why don't you pop that cheetah in the head with the camera? Tell him to leave me alone. But he's done the uh, Komodo dragons. I worked with um, the Indo Pacific and saltwater crocs in Australia. And my dream was to open up a crocodile rescue out there because they were killing all these big, beautiful 14, 15 foot crocs. It was breaking my heart. And uh, there's, I went out there to try to catch a 20 footer. And uh, we never caught them, but uh, it would have been a world record. It was, that's why we went out there in the first place. It was huge. Move to Australia. Do it. Life short. Move to Australia and open up your facility. I need that YouTube channel to take off because I ain't got enough money to, to watch Australia on TV right now. <laughs> it costs a lot of money when you, when you work 60 hours a week for free. It's not a lot of time to make money on the side. So um, saving gators has kind of kept me in the poorhouse. But uh, I'm hoping some of the money these guys are making on YouTube is crazy. And I'm hoping what I do translates over to the – the, uh, YouTube generation. I can understand that. I can understand that. I know you want to get out and go get to work. So maybe two or three more questions, then I'll let you go. You know, you before you, you know, be, let's say, you know, Lord forbid something happens. What do you want to be remembered for? Oh, Conserv I don't care. Conservation, conservation. I don't care about that stuff. I, that doesn't, a, a good friend, you know what I mean? I, that stuff doesn't, um, there's been billions and billions and billions of people throughout the history of time. I'm, I'm a grain of sand in the Sahara Desert. I don't mean any more than anybody else. I disagree. And if people remember me, it doesn't do me any good. You know what I mean? I'm gone. And uh, <laughs> hopefully my friends remember me as a good friend. That's all I really care about. Right, right, right. Now, um, are you still doing your educational shows? Yeah, I still do the Gator shows at Holiday Park, uh, usually Friday, Saturdays. And uh, that's kind of what I fund the rescue with. We don't get paid because of liability. So I'm just begging for tips to feed these guys. And right now it's just gas. It's like 400 bucks a week in gas chasing alligators. But it's the uh, it's a quiet season now. So I've actually been up in Massachusetts training for another double Ironman coming up in October. So I'm going to run 50 miles in uh, like four weeks. And my longest run of the year has been like 15. So I got some work to do. That is awesome. That is awesome. I love it. If any if anybody that's watching this, make sure you hit up Paul. If you can, send him some don donations. Help him get some of these alligators fed. Help him get, some, you know, just some stuff taken care of. He's a good guy. He's doing some good work. Um, I want to end the podcast, man. Just thank you for you gave us an amazing 45 minutes. Um, yeah, before you go, I'm going to have a little fun. Just a hot seat question. Let's say you were reading. Your, let's say you had your grandkids with you um, and you're reading them a book about your life. What would the title of the book be, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I don't know. Um, having fun, happy to be here. I love that. I love that. That's what it's about, man. Have, living your life, having fun, and just, you know, just doing what you love. And I think that's what you you have done with your whole entire life, just pursued your passion, and I love it. I think that you are, you know, just a stand-up guy, and I appreciate you being here. Yeah, man. I'm going to let you go. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so uh, much, man. I, I'll let you get to work, man. Thank you again for coming on and talking with us. And if you can have those, your fans go to uh, GatorBoys.com, click the YouTube link, the best way to find my channel. If you just search Gator Boys on YouTube, you get all the Animal Planet stuff. So if you go to GatorBoys.com, click the YouTube link, you'll go right to my channel, check out all the new content I've been putting out. I love that, man. You have an amazing night. Thank, Thank you so you. much, sir. All right, bro. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.
How awesome was that, man? Big reptile talk. Big Paul from Gator Boys. Look at that. How awesome is that? He's going to hunt pythons right now. But just a just an amazing guy. Had an amazing show on Animal Planet. Make sure you go check it out. Gator Boys. It ran for six seasons. Awesome, awesome podcast. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, before you leave, I wanted to do something cool, special. Oh, Fungus Queen. Thank you so much. For that super chat, I appreciate you. Mike's monitors, thank you. Um, anybody in the chat, um, if you want to, if you want to win a Derek's Reptile shirt, I want you got to do something. If you're here and you want to win a Derek's Reptiles t-shirt, now keep in mind, we just paid rent. It's the first of the month, so I'm not shipping it out right, you know, right away. It'll be on the 23rd at the end of the month. If you would like to win a Derek Reptiles t-shirt for free, you have to go to my channel right now and comment my very first podcast. It's on my YouTube if you want. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. The first person to comment my first podcast on my YouTube, I'll send you a Derek's Reptiles t-shirt for free. It'll be at the end of the month on the 23rd. I'm going to hit you up, get your address, and send it out while we're waiting. Thank you so much, Fungus Queen. Just a just a super fun podcast. That that that's a a, a stand up guy. He's doing an insane work, basically taking care of alligators for free. I mean that speaks speaks volumes to that that man's character. Um, I'm just I'm shocked that we were able to get him because, like I said, this man has been on TV for six seasons. Busy guy, busy guy. How's everybody doing? Um, again, thanks, Mike. If you're here and you want to win a Derek's Reptiles t-shirt, what was my first podcast? I've been podcasting for one year now, and I'm curious. Oh, man, Roz, you're good, man. You're good, man. It was a, it was definitely a fun, fun podcast. Um, I want to shout out everybody that has to has gators if you have a crocodile you know or an alligator you know so shout out to deranged reptile feedings shout out rod shout out gator poop gators anybody out there that has crocs this was a fun podcast we got to talk to paul beater from the gator boys man it was definitely a fun podcast now if you're here i'm gonna end i'm gonna, I'm gonna give this maybe about five or ten more minutes but if you're here and you want to win a Derek's reptiles t-shirt Look at my channel and comment below. What was my first podcast? It was a year ago. It's still on my channel right now. I haven't deleted it. Thank you, Moon. I appreciate that. What is up, yo? Yo, two times. Reptiles, Nick Shine in the building, man. Yeah, hey, Roz, it, 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 was, it was definitely a fun podcast. We got to chop it up with, like I said, Paul from the Gator Voice, man. How awesome is that? I got five minutes because it don't take that long to scroll. Anybody that want to win a Derek's Reptiles t-shirt, comment below. What was my first podcast? That's why I'm keeping this going. Oh, man, it's, fun. it's, all, it's all love, man. I appreciate everybody showing up. I appreciate that. I'll give you a hint. It was, it was horrible. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know nothing about StreamYard. And I recorded it with my phone. I literally had the guy on my phone, and I'm recording it with another phone. It was a horrible podcast. It was fun, but it was fun. We're going five minutes. We're gonna go to to this thing says about fifty or fifty one minutes, and then I'm gonna shut it down. If nobody comments, nobody wins a shirt. But. I want to give away, a, I'm going to repeat again, if you're in the comments. My first one was a Brian Bartek. No, that was that wasn't my first podcast. I wish that was my first podcast. I had to work up to get Brian Bartek on. Good guess, though, Mike. If you're here and you want to win a Derek's Reptiles t-shirt, I'm shipping it out to you for free. Again, I ain't doing it right now. It was the beginning of the month. We just paid that rent. Oh, man. Roz, thank you so much, man. Um, while you're here, Roz, man, I want to tell you, I don't know if Kurt will hit you up, but everything's paid for. Kurt Wood is shipping out on Tuesday. Uh, he's shipping your snake on Tuesday. It's paid for, taken care of. He, he got your address. I know he said he got your address. 
So your new ball python is getting shipped out Tuesday, man. We love you, Ross. Thank you so much for that. Mike said, damn, I'm slow. Nope, you're not slow. I'm celebrating. I want to give away a Derek's Reptiles t-shirt. You got to tell me my first podcast. So you have to scroll my YouTube and figure out what was my very first podcast. It's on my, it's on my YouTube. You got about two minutes, and then I'm shutting this down. Jazz's Jungle. You're close. That was my second one. It's the one before that one. You're very close, yo, two times, Big Sean. Man, Ross, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you, man. Y'all make sure y'all go check out Ross Reptiles. He always big supporter of the channel. You're close. You're close for two times, Reptiles. That was my second podcast. You're right there. That is correct. Wiccans, Wicked Reptiles. Fungus Queen, you won the shirt. Oh, Sean, she beat you. Sean, she beat you, dog. So, Fungus Queen, I'm going to hit you up after this. Um, I'm going to get your at wherever you want me to send a T-shirt to. And I'm letting you know it won't be, you know, for a couple of days. Because, like I said, you know, first of the month, we just paid that rent. Everybody got to pay that rent. You know what I mean? So, I get paid again on the 23rd of this month. So on the 23rd, I'm going to ship you out a free Derek's Rest House shirt just because you got the answer correct, man. So salute, Fungus Queen. <laughs> Mike's Monitor J. It was fun, man. Roz, Sean, everybody that showed up, man. This was a fun podcast. Again, if you're just tuning in, we got the chance to talk to Dick Paul from Gator Boys. Just an awesome show on Adam Planet. Y'all make sure y'all tune in for the next podcast. You never know who I'm going to go get. Yo, two times said, I need my runner-up cap. You know what? I'm in a good mood. Sean, I'm sending you a shirt, too, just because. And Roz, I'm sending you one, too. I'm sending them three out. Roz, you're getting a free shirt. Yo, two times reptiles, you're getting a shirt. And Fungus Queen, you're getting a shirt. I'm sending three shirts out because I'm feeling good. End of the month. So three shirts are getting sent out. So I'm going to hit all three of y'all up. Thank you so much, Fungus Queen. Until next time, man, this is Big Reptile Talk. You know, as always, we got to pay those bills, right? So if you're still here and you keep reptiles, make sure you check out Venomproof Cages, one of the best cages in the game. If you keep reptiles, keep them safe and keep them, you know, in style. Venomproof Cages, one of the best cages on the market. And if you produce animals, make sure you check out Ship Your Reptiles. You're going to focus on making amazing animals. And Ship Your Reptiles are going to focus on getting your animals to you safely and securely. One of the best businesses out there. Until next time, man. This is Derek's Reptiles. This is Big Reptile Talking. We out of here. Yeah. You don't start things and not finish them. You don't quit. There's nothing that comes out of quitting besides knowing that you didn't finish. We finish everything. You start it, finish it. If you're going to do it, do it to try to be the best. Not to be better than other people, but to be the best for you. You grind hard so you can play hard. The work you put in will pay off. It could be a year. It could be 30 years. But you keep grinding. Welcome to Big Reptile Talk.